G'day, and in today's video, I'll be tearing apart a Garmin Edge 510 fitness tracker. Now, the dilemma that this particular one is having is that the power button is no longer functioning as it should. It still physically presses down, but as you can see, there is a fair bit of wear on the button. So I'm not sure if the button has been pushed in or if the actual plastic that's meant to be hitting the button has worn apart or worn off. So what you're going to require with this one is a T4 screwdriver. You'll note throughout the video I do change the screwdriver heads quite a bit. That was until I found the correct one to use. So I just ignore what I'm using most of the time. But as you can see there is six T4 screws that need to come out. So the two top corners, the sides and the two bottom. So I'll just start doing that now. And once you've got all six of them removed, carefully lift up the screen and you'll be able to see a flex connector for the display. Now you should be able to just use your nail on this one to pop that off. There we go. So that is now the display in the top section removed. Basically that step there, if you want to replace the display, you'd finish there and you'd swap it over. If you do require to dig further down, there is three more T4 screws right there that do need to be removed as well. Now these screws, I've, the screw heads I do find to be very soft, so the chance of actually stripping them is fairly high, especially if without the correct driver, which I nearly do in this video, but with the T4 I managed to reinstall them at the end perfectly fine. There we go, and we can kind of just drop it out from there. The battery will still be connected. So, I'll just have a look at the button first. The button itself seems to be in pretty good condition. No real signs of wear or damage to it. Looking at it from the side, I would have expected it to be pushed back at the top of the button, or the little black bit to be completely stuck in but it's functioning as it should. So my next train of thought then is the on the plastic shell 
with a bit of rubber that pushes in onto that button. I'm going to check out its condition and see if that's healthy. As I've shown, there's also the 900 milliamp battery and the mini USB port, which are all possibly replaceable things on this model. So look at the actual housing itself, I can see a lot of black powder, or it almost looks like black powder, but I suspect that to be the worn off button, or the worn off rubber which connects onto the button itself, which is located in here. So I'm not too sure what I'll do to repair this, but what I'm currently going with will be using some silicon glue or frame adhesive is the typical stuff that I would, be, would slash will be using. And what I've done is I've put some on that end plastic piece to increase its mass. And this footage right here is the day after, after I've already applied the adhesive and it's hardened and it seems to be reacting well when I push down the button. So now I'll be doing the reassembly on there, which involves connecting up the button. Uh, I'm sorry, connecting up the battery, which on this one I found the battery did like to pop out quite a lot when sealing it up and closing it up. So after a fair bit of battling and routing the power leads out of the way, I also put some anti-static tape over the, the battery connector just to make sure it does stay in position. Anyway, that seems to be good now. So I'll be using a T4 screwdriver to put the three screws to hold the mainboard back in. Two down the bottom, one up the top right hand corner. Now the next fun is connecting up the LCD flex connector. Warning, it may light up white when you first connect it up. It does for me, or did for me, purely because the, I believe the device automatically switches on when there's a power source connected. So there's not really too much you can do to avoid that. But if you do connect it up and the screen stays white, just press and hold the power button for about 15 seconds and that should completely power off the device from there and turn it on and you should have a display functioning 
quite normally from there. So as you can see, I've got the white screen right now. As I'm clicking in the button, I'm hearing it actually acknowledging that I'm pressing it. So now that I'm just holding it down, uh, still not quite. Uh, it's actually adjusting dim uh, brightness settings right now, so it is actually loaded up. There we go, power killed. Then power will be back on. Also, don't forget to put back in the six T4 screws in the back of it. And then hopefully from there you have your Garmin up and going once more. So this has been a little bit of, of a repair and also a, bit, a complete teardown of the Garmin Edge 510. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.